testimony will be taken at this meeting. However, if town action has not been received, a decision will be made at a subsequent meeting. If there is public opposition on a petition, the petition will be postponed until the next meeting of the committee. This will give the petitioner and staff an opportunity to work out matters between parties. If the town action has been submitted and there is no opposition to a petition, the committee may act on the petition and refer the petition to the county board. If the committee passes the petition unanimously, your presence at the county board may not be necessary. However, if the petition is controversial, it is advised that you attend the county board meeting. Committee action on conditional use permits is the final action of the county. These applications are not referred to the county board. The next county board meeting is January 12th. The next ZOR committee meeting is January 10th. Uh, also, I'd like to point out that our youth governance member, Garrett Stone, has joined us. Uh, the next item on the agenda is consideration of minutes. We have the uh, minutes from our November 7th and our November 22nd meeting. I do approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion? Saying none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. And the minutes are approved. First petition is rezone 11,063, Paul Markart Properties in Town of Blue Mountains. Paul Markhart, uh, 8980 Prairie Grove Road, Barnville, Wisconsin. Uh, regarding property I own, 2263 County Highway Z, Blue Mountain, Wisconsin. Anything you want to specifically tell us? Um, I would like to rezone uh, two prop or two lots off of the property that I own now, from A1 to A2. Um, lot one would be A1 to A28. And then lot two would be A1 to A2. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Roger. The town of Blue Mounds has approved this petition on December 12th. Um, in front of you tonight is the town action report. Uh, the town placed some conditions on this petition. The board feels that the barn should remain as an existing structure. There is a 66 foot right of way between both properties. They would like a 66 foot mold at the end of the driveway. The other staff comments have been addressed by extending the westerly property lines of the CSM lots. Uh, the septic field in lot two is completely uh, within the boundary of the um, lot with the existing house and the boundaries of the uh, proposed lots will be moved to facilitate the keeping of livestock. And for clarification, the town board approved this when? December 12th, that was yesterday. Um, committee members because we are only meeting this once one time during this month i propose that we have a motion to suspend the rules of only taking town action if it was received on the thursday before our meetings and if roger has the town action that we go ahead and um, act on the petitions i'll make a motion to suspend the rules i'll second but i Okay, so we have a motion and a second to uh, suspend the rules on receipt of town action after Thursday before me. Uh, Supervisor Tom. In circumstances like this, it would be good if the um, file could be updated in Legislature. I reviewed the agenda this afternoon, and to my knowledge, this and a couple others had no town action. So okay. if yeah. I, as a member of the committee, didn't know what was going on, a member of the public, might not as well, and certainly not in this case, but there might be opposition that would have stayed home based on the belief that it would have been postponed. Okay, point well made. Roger, do you want? Um, yes, the um, 
all the committee action reports that were um, uh, received on Friday, Legistar was uh, updated. It's very difficult to update Legistar a day prior uh, to that because everything has to be republished. But to your point, well made that we have action from literally last night. That is correct. So um, do we know if we have town approvals that actually had opposition? Would we know that? Uh, yes, I, I, I've been in contact. Both uh, did not have any, uh, the both that are placed on your uh, desks tonight did not have any public uh, opposition at the town level. Mm -hmm. Well, this, it, it's probably not a good practice in the long run. Uh, agreed. It, yeah. The primary uh, problem is is that this public hearing has been moved up two weeks, so right. it didn't allow the proper process yeah, to follow through. Correct. Okay, but point well taken that mm -hmm. um, the public needs to know. Yeah, it, it, I, I think Legistar has its limitations. So, if Legistar were not so rigid, Ryder would be able to put like a note in the file. But I don't think Legistar is flexible. Uh, no, it, one, once the public, once the agenda is posted, it's posted. Yes. And if I add anything to it, then you wouldn't be able to see any of the agenda items. It would be like carving it in granite. Okay. So, granite. Um, yeah, so it, it throws everything out with it. Right. <laughs> uh, and again, for clarification, there's only two. That is correct. Two petitions with town action that occurred last night. This one correct. and one other that we'll highlight when we get to that one. Okay, on the motion to suspend the rules and um, friendly amendment that it's on the two that Roger has noted. So it's just two petitions. Okay? You're good with that, Supervisor Mattel? Right. Okay. I'm All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. And so the motion to suspend the rules of Accepting town action after Thursday before fire to our meeting passes. Okay. I have a question for Roger. Roger, yes, are you, the staff concerns listed on the um, action report, the staff report, have they been addressed? Have they been met? Your concerns? Uh, yes, we we have been uh, in contact with the surveyor. They are uh, shifting the property lines uh, west. Uh, to fil facilitate a nice flat spot for a uh, new house to be uh, positioned on the northerly parcel. Uh, the southerly lot, the west property line, was shifted over approximately five feet to give a 50 foot distance between that and the existing barn so the barn could legally have livestock in it. Uh, and then the surveyor has found a way to uh, get 66 feet in between the uh, mm -hmm. two lots so that they could facilitate a four rod road and also uh, looking at uh, the final CSM that will be drafted will have a bulb at the end of the uh, cul-de-sac. One of the items that uh, we were um, um, concerned about or had questions, the uh, remainder of the farm has two housing density rights and we were wondering where they were going to be going. The, uh, with the bulb at the end of the cul-de-sac would facilitate uh, future residential development if desired. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Paul, do you have any concerns regarding this visit petition? I do not. Then I'll make a motion to approve with the town conditions. Second. Okay, we have a motion to uh, approve the petition with town conditions. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. And the petition is approved. Moving on to petition 11,064. It is uh, Dane County Growers Partnership in the town of Albany. My name is Richard Mullen. Uh, my address is W9285 Old Road, Cambridge. I represent the owner of the property, uh, working under the name, in this case, uh, Dane County Growers Partnership. 
a brief summary of the project. Uh, Dane County Rose Partnership owns the parcel shown there, and he seeks to split the house or garage and a small shed away from it to result in a rectangular lot, not that one, just a rectangle, uh, and uh, change the zoning from uh, change the zoning to R3 and retain ownership of the, and then sell that one, and retain ownership of the remaining ag land. Uh, a couple of uh, items that confuse the matter here is the same owner, uh, the same individual owns the, the subject parcel, the parcel to the south and the parcel to the north under three different uh, corporate names, but it's all farmed together. Uh, the remaining five plus acres would be deeded to the corporate name to the south, which is Crazy Acres, and continue to be farmed continuously throughout the acreage. So the, we would have a two-lot CSM, the proposed lot two, then would be uh, undergo a change in ownership through a quick claim deed uh, immediately. And the residential, the rectangular residential parcel would be sold for owner occupation. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Okay. Seeing none, Roger. The Town of Albion has approved this petition with no conditions. Staff has noted that prior to uh, a decision being rendered on this petition, a uh, waiver needs to be granted due to the fact that the uh, westerly lot does not have any frontage on a public right of way. I'll make a motion to waive the 66-foot uh, Frontage requirement. I would second it, but should we uh, have a motion to take up a ladder, an item later in the agenda first? Is it on our? I can find it. It is on the next page. Yeah. It's on the next page. Yeah. I forgot the name of that. Oh, okay. <coughs> if you scroll down and then. Uh, <coughs> So what's it under? Oh, there it is. Okay, it's under agenda item F. So I would, I think what I heard Supervisor Pollock say is he moves to take up item F at this time. That would be fine. And I second the motion. All right. Okay. That's what I said. Yeah. yeah on the motion to move item F to uh, this point in our agenda, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. And so before us is the waiver, the land division waiver for Dane County Growers IMF. I move approval. Second. And we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. And the waiver is approved. Heading back up. Back to petition 11,064. I move approval of 11,064. I'll second. Okay, and so we have a motion to approve uh, rezone 11,064 and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. And the petition is approved. Thank you. You're welcome. Next is CUP 2365, Lucas Proctor in the town of Springdale. And did you get a chance to fill out a form? I did not. No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to fill that out first? No. Uh, you can speak, and okay. but you will need to fill out a form, please. Uh, Lucas Proctor, 1755 State Road 92, Mount Warp, Wisconsin. Uh, Let's see, so this is for the conditional use permit, or this is for the rezoning? rezoning. So I'm doing both, I think. Rezoning. Okay. 
So this is yeah, my mistake. I missed uh, 1165, Lucas Proctor, Thomas Springdale, and also CUP. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, we wanted to rezone from A1 and R2 to just straight A1 for the whole property uh, per the uh, town of Springdale's request as far as uh, in the conditional use permit as well. Um, I think that's it. All right. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Can you say no, Roger? The town of Springdale has approved the rezoning petition with no conditions. And just go ahead and address the CUP also any information on the CUP. Yes, the town of Springdale has also approved the conditional use permit with nine conditions. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, CUP first with the town and staff conditions. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to approve the CUP and a second with staff and town conditions for the discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And the CUP is approved. I'll make a motion to approve the rezone. Second. And we have a motion and a second to approve the rezone 11,065. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And the petition is approved. Next is rezone 11,066, which is uh, David Carls in the town of Dane. Michael Emerson, we are the property owners of 6645 Hislop Road. Uh, basically, looking to rezone, we're going to tear down the existing home that's there and rezone it per Dane County's request and build a new home there. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Okay, saying none, Roger. The town of Dane has approve this rezoning petition with no conditions. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay. Um, rezone petition 1066. We have a motion to approve and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And the petition is approved. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Next is rezone 11067. There, every in the town of Dunkirk. I'm Thera Every, 512 Taylor Lane. Uh, application for rezoning and COP for uh, property location 298, State Highway 138, in the town of Dunkirk. We're speaking of rezoning A1 to A2 for three acres in the uh, 40 acre parcel with a uh, conditional use. To operate a sewage and recycling site. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Thank you. Roger. The town of Dunkirk has approved the rezoning petition. It was conditioned upon one parcel being deed restricted to prohibit further residential development. Uh, there are actually two parcels parcels and I think this is a southerly one. That's great. Yep. And then uh, they also approve the conditional use permit with 11 conditions. Staff is suggesting uh, 13 conditions. Um, in addition to the 11 town conditions, uh, we're requesting that the salvage recycling center comply with all applicable local, state, and federal permits and that there are no signs permitted on the premises. I'll make a motion to approve the CUP first with the uh, town and staff conditions. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the CUP with town and staff conditions. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And the CUP is approved. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, rezone at this time. Second. And go ahead. Sorry. 
Is that a second? Second. Okay, good. We have a motion and a second to approve the rezone. Any further discussion? Saying none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. And the rezone is approved as well. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Next, we have Rezone 11,068, Chad Catlin in the town of Pleasant Springs. Summers, 5593 Whalen Road, Fitchburg, representing Chad and Cindy Catlin on the property 2771 County Highway N, Cottage Grove. We're asking for a postponement because we have not been in front of Pleasant Springs yet. Um, I did bring the uh, easement uh, approval from next door so that you can have it. But that's what we're requesting right now. And then we'll be able to come in front of you after we go to Pleasant Springs. Okay, thank you. Roger, do you want to add to that? Uh, yes. Um, the town of Pleasant Springs is still working on reviewing this petition. Uh, there are several outstanding items that uh, the petitioner is also working on. Uh, one being uh, adequate access to this property. Uh, this property is quite unique because the interchange between Interstate I-39 and Highway N is going through a major reconstruction uh, that will eliminate their current access to Highway N. Uh, the access will be uh, for this site. Uh, the only way to access it is to go directly south through two properties to a cul-de-sac bulb that will be positioned uh, approximately a thousand feet away. So that's uh, one of the items. There are some issues with taxes as well as submitting a site plan showing where all the buildings and structures are going to be, parking layout, display areas, exterior lighting, screening, landscaping, and signage. So this was published on our agenda and you're here tonight. And was there anything else you wanted to add? I just want to uh, give you the lifetime access to our property from the neighbor next door. Okay. Okay. So that's one of the items. And is your, okay, and, and, all right. That's one of the conditions? That's one of the conditions. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. And then they'll be taking care of the rest before we come in front okay. of you again. Thank you. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Thank you. Thank you. I'll second that. Supervisor Matano has moved postponement. It's been seconded by Supervisor Bullock. And it is for our rules. Any further discussion? Saying none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. And the petition is postponed. Next is rezone petition 11,069. Michael Duroff in the town of Oregon. Anyone here? Go ahead. Um, the applicant informed us that they have a meeting at the town of Oregon tonight so that they would not be able to attend. Okay. Move postpone the line of town action and lack of petition. Okay, so we have a motion to postpone due to lack of town action and lack of petitioner's presence. Second. And a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of postponement say aye. Aye. And uh, the petition is postponed. Next is rezone 11,070, Barbara Hellenbrand in the town of Barrie. That's uh, it's Mr. Bang, 450 North Baldwin Street, Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm here representing Barbara. Uh, she wishes to rezone approximately 5.5 acres of her existing farmland from A1 exclusive to RH2 um, so that her daughter and son in law can build a home on it. 
Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Okay. Thank you. Roger. I have been informed by the town of Barrie that they have not received this application and so it's still pending at the town of Barrie. I'll uh, make a motion to postpone due to lack of town action. Second. Okay, the, uh, we have the motion to postpone due to lack of town action. First and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. And the petition is postponed. Next is rezone petition 11,071, Bettisnick Enterprises in the town of Burke. Hi, my name is Rachel Holloway. I'm with JSD Professional Services representing George Vitesnik and Vitesnik Enterprises for this uh, rezoning. Uh, just a few comments. Uh, it's my understanding that the committee would postpone action tonight, given that we have to go to the city yet for approval. Uh, but just to be clear where we're at, what we're proposing. Um, Vitesnik is looking to rezone parcel to C2 to match the zoning for the adjacent, the business on the adjacent lot, Mad City Power Sports. Uh, the purpose is specifically to allow the legal display of um, portable sheds, vehicles, and similar items, things that have been, I guess, historically displayed on this location for sale, so it's particularly things that the business sells, but other items as well. Uh, the lot for the business just south of this was rezoned in 2009, and when that happened, this parcel was deed restricted both by the city and the county. Um, the city deed restriction prohibits buildings on the entire lot, including north and south of Token Creek. The county deed restriction only specifies south of Token Creek as prohibited for buildings. Um, we're not contesting the deed restriction. We're hoping and we're going to submit to the city for approval. Uh, we'll be requesting a basically an interpretation of that deed restriction that allows portable goods. And uh, the testing is fine without you know constructing buildings on the site. So it's a matter of interpretation, possibly. We're not certain that the deed restriction would need to be released. So we'd like the ability for this to go forward without that being a requirement, if that's an option. Um, we're aware that the site has several environmental constraints, including shoreline zoning, there's buffers along the creek, um, floodplain, wetland. So our proposal is trying to steer clear of those areas and allow display only in a very limited piece of that triangular area north of the creek, um, outside of those environmental restricted areas. So we did have some interaction with city staff uh, since June, July, and August over email. They responded to a different proposal early on that had a more expansive display area. And they said they did not support it because of environmental reasons, but didn't give more information beyond that. And then when we sent this current proposal before you, uh, we have not received a staff, city staff response to this particular map, this display area. So we're, we're going to submit and take it to the city planning commission and see how they respond to this request since we're staying out of the environmentally sensitive areas. Um, that's basically the gist of it. Uh, we do have town approval, and there's a condition of approval that got put in there relating to a deed restriction to allow only buildings in the gravel area north of the creek. And we were not at that meeting, and the town didn't inform us that they were going to place that condition on there. And when I approached the town clerk afterwards, she said that was not necessarily intentional on the town's part, but that just happened to be how their this conversation went. So she said we could go back to the town and request the ability to display more items, not just these portable sheds. Um, but she wanted us to go to the city first before we go back to the town, so it's a little bit of a catch-22 we're in. Um, but I just wanted to clarify that since that is in the documents um, and where we're coming at from the town. But from what I'm hearing, that wasn't necessarily intended to be that restrictive. So um, both uh, George Chesnick and I are available to answer questions if you have any tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? My name is Joe Murray. I live at 4281 Dantel Road. Before I speak. <coughs> Um, as far as this, for the zoning compliance for outdoor sales display here, 
Um, this is right directly across the street from my home in a residential neighborhood where they want to put these portable buildings, which they call them. Um, these are not small buildings. These are rather large buildings. And there's a large safety concern about them putting those into our neighborhood. These are never monitored. They're never locked at night. There's no lights. There's no fencing. There's no gating, nothing around these buildings. For a short time, they were put in this location. They want to move them back to, but it was not zoned for it, so they had to move them, whereas they moved them over to the Vesnik side where the Madison Power Sports business is now, which is just on the other side of the crib. They have a large area over there where they're at, and they want to move them back to our side now of the crib in our neighborhood. And it is not safe for my family or anybody else's family in a residential neighborhood to have these buildings put. When they were there before, we had people over there at night in these empty buildings on this lot, which is very dark and secluded over there. So we have great concerns about this going back over there with these buildings. And it's not one building. They have 13 buildings on that little piece of property over there, right up to the crib. And when they put these buildings in over there, they sprayed all around these buildings and killed the stuff that was there, the grass, the weeds, everything around there they killed right up to the crib line, which they should not have done. And this is a protected area. When I bought my home, I was told nothing could be ever put over there because it was a protected area. No buildings whatsoever. These are buildings. These are portable buildings. They may be prefab, but they are placed over there. And it's large. They're very large buildings, which I have pictures of how large these buildings are with their sizes also. So um, we are totally, I am totally against these going over there because of the great safety concerns in our neighborhood without them being locked, fenced in, lit up, gated in any sort of way. We have two big companies down around the corner. We have Madison, or Badger Utility, and Royal Trucking Company, which are locked, gated, fenced, lit up, monitored, managed which when they put these buildings, if these go back across the street in our neighborhood, none of that happens over there. They're not locked, gated, fenced, nor managed, nor looked after on a daily basis. They are left open 24-7. And that is a great concern in a very residential neighborhood. But we just had two new homes built and families moving in. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Okay. Ms. Holloway or um, Mr. Vitesnik, you have uh, an opportunity to rebut. Yep. And again, I guess a reminder to just address the committee, please. Jordan Tesnik, 4246 Dantel Road. The lot that we're looking at to put display of our own goods that we sell. It's a gravel raised lot, which does no effect to the environmental decor. And basically, when I was 82, by the prior owner, prior owner had trucks and all kinds of things displayed there for years and years and years under 82 zoning. So I'm trying to do it under C2 zoning, which is legal. We're paying taxes. The rest of the property is C2. It's a whole commercial area there. And you want to just be able to display the stuff you sell. Uh, maybe, inter maybe interested in compromising and not being able to put the sheds there. But we want to be able to put, park the boat there, or park some of the things that we do sell for Nancy Power Sports. On a 10,000 square foot raised gravel triangle, it does no effect to anything. Okay, 
Thank you. Roger. The challenge Burke has approved this petition with conditions. The first condition um, to add a deed restriction to the property to limit the display of accessory buildings offered for sale on the gravel surface. The second condition is to obtain approval from the City of Madison and any conditions thereof. Um, the City of Madison does have a current deed restriction placed on the property that says that uh, permanent and temporary buildings are prohibited on this lot. Thank you. I'll make a motion to postpone due to public opposition. Second. Okay, we have a motion to postpone due to opposition. Any further discussion? Supervisor Uh Let me just ask Roger a couple of questions. I, I'm trying to get a view of the lay of the land here. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just ask two questions at once and you can answer them together. One is, where is the parcel that's before us? From where does one have roadway access to it? And then secondly, is the subdivision there, Danielle Drive, is that in the city of Madison or the town of Burke? Uh, Dental Drive is in the town of Burke. Um, <clears throat> it's a little confusing because there's a lot of right away here. So Dental Road comes up and then turns to the uh, west going around and then hooks up to Denali Road. So that's where the subdivision is. Mad City Power Sports is down in this location here. Uh, there's a pond here. Uh, this is Token Creek, and this is the portion that they were talking about, the 10,000 square foot of gravel area. So, so south of there is Med City Sports, and it has access to a road that's south of here and off the... That's off correct. Road. That's correct. Um, On, is it in a specific part of the property getting the access north of Token Creek? As I understand it, that's what's... Okay. Oh, I see. So, all right. all right, I guess I get the, the basic idea. See, we're close to it, but I just figured I'd get us the idea what we're looking at. Yes, the most southerly lot, I believe, goes down to the uh, truck stop and then gets onto Highway CV. Oh. So it's kind of like as you get to that major Highway 51 CV intersection, if you just go directly north on one of the frontage roads, that's Denali, uh, Denali Road, Dental Road, Dental Road, that kind of just goes north uh, behind the truck stop, and right, more or less. And then comes around. Okay. Yeah. Here, I got a, you an aerial question? photo, but it's kind of awesome. No, I got that. That was enough. I was just trying to get a feel for them. Okay, we have the uh, motion to postpone and a second. Any further discussion? It might be helpful to clarify. Um, you know, we had the concern about the city of Madison approval being required, and I want to point out that that's not just a condition that the town added, that's actually one of the terms of their cooperative planning agreement that they have with, between the town and the city. Um, so our recommendation in the staff report was to postpone until we hear from the city, um, just to make that clear if it's a just standard procedure, we get opposition, we take it up at the next meeting, we have a certain prerogative, but our recommendation would be, and that my understanding is they're actually following up with the city, so it might be good to have that in hand. No, I'll amend my motion to uh, postpone until we hear from the city. Second. 
Okay, so the uh, motion to postpone due to opposition has been amended to include uh, resolution with the city of Madison as well. As the petitioner has stated, they are aware of. Any further discussion? Say none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. And the petition is postponed. Next, we have rezone 11,072 with Robert Reach in the town of Deerfield. Reedy. Reedy. Dave Dinkle, Remax, Crosby Shop, uh, as agent for Kim and Robert Rangy. Uh, the Rangy's bought a lot. That was part of what we call the Bowers Farm, beautiful home site, uh, 15 to 16 acre kind of thing. What they really care about is the fence line that is on the north and west sides of the lot, which is adjacent to their home and their home farm. Uh, and so what we're doing is looking at splitting the lot taking the, the fence line back to A1 exclusive as part of their whole farm operation, and then uh, putting the residual land back on the market as a uh, residential lot. It does have a, uh, a joint driveway set up with the, uh, and approved by the township. It's next to an, another lot. We did appear before the township planning commission and the town of Deerfield board and was approved unanimously. The, the, and the ratings understand that that land is not a creation of a new home site, it's just removing some land from an existing home site. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Okay, thank you, Roger. The town of Deerfield has approved this petition with no conditions. I move approval. I'll second. We have a motion to approve and a second. Any further discussion? Say none. All those in favor say aye. All right. And the petition is approved. Thank you. Uh, next, rezone 11073, Alex McKenzie in the town of Vermont. Okay. Did you get a chance to? Okay, very good. speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Yes. And did you get a chance to fill a form? No, I'm not. Okay, uh, we'll need you to fill the form. Judy Hendrickson, on behalf of Matthew Fleming with Murphy Desmond, uh, we represent um, Nick and Penny Sandell. Uh, Attorney Fulney asked me to appear tonight. He learned today uh, through Roger that presence is required to have the letter that he drafted and submitted today accepted. Do you need to actually read this in to the record or just uh, provide it to you? Um, so the issue is that you heard our rules tonight with opposition. And so you are here with opposition. I believe all members did get the email and you're going to hand it to Roger tonight. So um, we do have that information, but thank you for being here this evening because, again, if you're registering the opposition, uh, the committee does strongly support that the presence of the person in opposition should be here. So thank you. Um, but if you just wanted to highlight why you're in a 
uh, position? I'm sorry, I can't speak to that. Um, I'm not familiar with the issues here. My understanding, though, is that the parties have been in um, communication but have not yet had an opportunity to reach a resolution. I am simply standing into the letter tonight. And do you know about any statements that were made at the town meeting? I do not. Okay. So you're just here delivering the email to have it ask that it be admitted to the public record? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Alex, you have the opportunity to rebut. And have you had a chance to actually see the email and the letter? Okay. Yeah, I got a copy of the letter as well. Um, I mean, I guess my comment to that is that's hopefully between my neighbor and myself. Um, I'm really not sure what 100% what his uh, opposition is. So, I mean, obviously we're trying to work it out between the two of us. Um, and that's all I got for now. So. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Okay, Roger. The town of Vermont had approved this last night with no conditions. And um, I have also displayed uh, where the Sondell's property is uh, in relation to the Mackenzie's property. There's approximately 1,600 feet in between the Sondell property and to where the new proposed home site will be. I have a question for staff. Um, any petition postponed this evening will be on our agenda again when? January 10th. 10th. Um, would it create a hardship if we postpone this until then to give you an opportunity to, to communicate with your neighbors and possibly work this out? I mean, I think his concern is that my home site will somehow negatively impact his, his plans for his land, which I don't know what his plans are. Um, if we we're trying to rezone the southern portion portion of it so we can have a legal parcel that we can sell to my in-laws. Right. So, I mean, the sooner that happens, the better for me. Um, we're not going to build our house until the spring. You know, we won't be under construction until the spring. Um, I'm not, if anything got postponed, I mean, I don't, I really don't know why, what we're doing that is, you know, negatively impacting him. Other than Actually, that's just I was getting searching, harder. I was searching for some insight on that myself. Yeah. Um, okay. Roger, is there any precedent for this? I mean, we've got a letter of opposition, but I've got no formal reason for opposition. The through this letter that I believe was drafted by Attorney Fleming, it seems like the Sondell's biggest concerns uh, are regards to basically they don't want to look at another home site. They want um, screening all around it and then they want some type of maintenance agreement so I guess the house doesn't get deteriorated so I um, I'm at a loss for what valid okay. reasons there so this is kind of an unusual request then is that what I'm hearing in your experience I, I would have to say so yeah um, I'm going to move approval on this based, based on the town approval. Supervisor Matano. I, I, before I say anything more, I, I had a question for staff, which is um, 
is is there not an issue of lack of road frontage for the? And it's there was some language that I was a little bit confused by saying it was basically all one lot, but there the way that square there is is just kind of floating out in space. So what is? The, the Mackenzies will own the remainder of the 60-some acres. Um, their in-laws will own the uh, end of that unnamed road. They will have a driveway easement going through that property to their home site on the north. Our, our ordinance says 66 feet of frontage on a public road, and we have a provision for if there's a hardship to be able to build something based on a shared driveway agreement. Is this based on that, or is it based on the theory that it's not really even it, a new lot? It's not even a new lot. It's over uh, 35 acres in size, so it's not required to be part of a certified survey map. Certified survey map regulations say all lots created through a certified survey map need to front, front on a public road. If it's over 35 acres in size, there are no requirements to front on a public road. Uh, so basically, it's a spot zone on a very large piece of property that they would like to build their house. And so a private drive easement would be uh, an optimal way to obtain access. So that, so that would be based on the authority that predates our ordinance change of two, two or so years ago? Uh, that's correct. And it sounds like Majid wants to supplement your answer. Yeah, I would just point out, and, and it's been many months, but Alex contacted our office before putting in the petition, and we had advised that um, there's essentially two ways. You either, you know, at, at one point he was considering possibly doing a separate parcel for the new home site, decided ultimately against that, uh, but we had advised that they put together the shared driveway easement agreement uh, to meet the terms that we have in the subdivision code, which they've done. Um, so to their credit, they've at least got a very detailed shared driveway easement agreement um, that meets our ordinance standards where you know, we have for that exception allowance if you were to have multiple lots being served that do not have, do not all have frontage. Um, so I would kind of give them credit for that, but yeah, we, uh, it is just a zoning lot, not a separate parcel for the new site. What, what concerns me is ultimately everybody we get proposals like this and it's all like it's me and my in-laws or whatever, but ultimately all of us are going to die. And our responsibility as a committee is um, systematic zoning of Gaines County. And so this is what I put in the death by a thousand cuts category. <laughs> but what you're, so, so basically I think it's a god-awful proposal, but what you're saying is that based the legal format for it is that it's over 35 acres. So based on that, I will second the motion, but also express concerns about waiving the uh, committee rule about opposition, which arguably we did get opposition even if it wasn't enunciated clearly. But in any case, uh, the bottom line is I second it, and I'll sit down now. Was was the motion to approve or suspend the rules? I withdrew the suspension of the rules. I don't think I made a motion to suspend the rules. Did I? No, I made a motion to approve. That's correct. Correct. And I, uh, being it is uh, contrary to our rules. Um, Supervisor Matani, you second the motion to approve? I did. Any further discussion on the motion to approve the petition? Seeing none, I will add a clarification then that we 
I still didn't get it from all the form, that we, uh, okay, because we do need it for the record, that, um, yeah, I, uh, for committee members either, I strongly recommend that we have a motion to suspend the rules due to opposition, or we make it abundantly clear that um, perhaps, uh, if I'm going to interpret, or you can correct me if I misinterpret, that the quote opposition um, actually didn't publicly state any opposition. It was referenced to an email that we received. Um, Supervisor Matano, you can give me the words as an Hebrews corpus when you present the body. So um, I don't know. Would this would this be a cleaner transaction if I withdrew my motion and assuming Supervisor Matano withdraws his second, we'll take this up again in January. But that I, I I just want to be abundantly clear that um, you know, I, I, I personally would feel better if there was a motion to suspend the rules based okay. on the clarification or the um, clearly stated that the opposition that was presented tonight was in reference to an email. Okay, you, you brought that up, Supervisor Matano brought it up earlier, so I'm going to make a motion to suspend the rules. I'll okay. Or uh, I'll withdraw my motion, I'm sorry. And... Uh, Having uh, made the withdrawal of the motion in the second, I'll make a motion to postpone at this time to, to opposition. Uh, I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion to postpone and a second. And um, I, again, for me as a member of this committee, I, I express concern that uh, the opposition was in reference to an email. Um, for everyone's knowledge in the record, we are actually rewriting our rules to ensure that it is stated in our rules that um, to be a part of the public record that you should be at the meeting. Um, I'm very uncomfortable as an elected official taking emails from people and them not being at a meeting where someone is planning their future, um, property rights and so forth. So, Supervisor Matamo, you wanted to add something? Um, only accidentally so. I saw my light was still on. I would just argue that the petitioner's best interests are probably uh, served by a postponement because we just got a letter from a big time law firm and sometimes haste makes waste. So, they're probably better off um, not having us up here to bend our rules to uh, get, get them in a month early. Thank you. Okay, so again, the motion is postponed due to opposition. All those in favor say aye. 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 And the petition is postponed. <coughs> Next is rezone 11,074. Wayne Messick in the town of Albion. Wayne May 6, 688 Edgerton Road, uh, looking to rezone uh, approval to create uh, two single family uh, parcels. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Roger. The town of Albion has approved this petition with no conditions. I'll move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion to approve and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. And 11,074 is approved. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, CUP 2363. And did you get a chance? Thank you. Come on. Grant McCarns, 1750 Beach Road, Verona, uh, representing Madison Speedway, uh, on the 22 Sunrise Road, Oregon. And uh, essentially, we're here to uh, extend the conditional use permit that was in place for the Speedway to our uh, to the new ownership, which is my wife and I.
Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay, good. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Okay, Roger. The town of Rutland has approved this petition with no conditions. They are keeping the same um, conditions as was uh, with the previous deed restriction and conditions. It stated that any time there was a change of ownership that a new conditional use permit would be applied for. So this gentleman is applying for the new conditional use permit and hopefully will abide by the conditions as set by the town and the county. I'll make a motion to approve with the conditions as stated. Okay. Second. Okay, we have a motion to uh, approve the uh, CUP 2363. Any further discussion? Say none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. And the CUP is approved. Thank you. Okay, and uh, certain we have emailed that Mr. Halverson has uh, rescinded or removed his petition. Yes, get some more. Yeah. Oh, I did. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> CUP 2364 is Dana Hungisto. I'm Dana Hungisto. <clears throat> Excuse me, Dana Hungisto, uh, 1008 Peterson Road in Montrose. Um, I want to approve a CUP to continue a horse boarding at the property. Anything else? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Right, if you could fill the form, that's why I miss things. Thank you. Roger? Um, this property was um, previously the Hoofers Esquestrian Club. Um, the town of Montrose has approved this conditional use permit for horse boarding contingent upon um, parking being prohibited on Severson Road, horses being limited to 30, and the conditional use permit terminate with the sale of the land or the change of business owner. Staff is suggesting 12 conditions be placed on the horse boarding facility. I have a question for the petitioner. Are you in agreement with the staff and town conditions? Yes. Okay, then I'll make a motion to approve this petition with the town and staff conditions. Second. CUP, I should say. Or no? Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. It's good. Kind of okay, uh, we have a motion to approve and a second to approve uh, CUP 2364. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. And the CUP is approved. Okay, now 1178 has been rescinded. Mr. Halverson? Yes, uh, Mr. Halverson has requested that the rezone application 11,078 and conditional use permit 2367 be withdrawn at this time. We don't have to do anything. Okay, uh, maybe the committee could accept the withdrawal. I'll make a motion to accept the withdrawal. Second. Of the uh, CUP and the rezone. Can we have a motion and a second to, you said the CUP and the rezone, to um, approve removal? All those in favor say aye. 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 And they're gone. Okay, next from previous meetings, rezone 11,051, item in rentals and investments in the town of Sun Prairie. Roger. Okay. This vote. This petition was postponed at the October 25th meeting due to no town action. Since that time, the town of Sun Prairie has approved this petition. They approved the condition upon any additional paving or impervious surfaces that are installed on the property require prior approval of the town board. I'll make a motion to approve with the uh, town staff conditions. Second. 
Can we have a motion and a second to approve the rezone with town and staff conditions? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And the rezone is approved. Uh, also from previous meeting, CUP 2360, Harold Spawn in the town of Springfield. Gotcha. This post this petition was postponed at the October 25th Z ZLR committee meeting due to no town action since that time the town has approved this petition limited on a one year expiration date a limit to 50 animals and there will be no pasturing of animals and all animals to be kept on the concrete or in a building except for clearing cleaning of the area land and water dane county land and water resources has very strong concerns with regards to keeping of animals on this property there is no manure management plan it is just being um, scraped off uh, the concrete to the south which is allowed to drain into the pond to the north so everything is scraped to the north and everything continues on to the north and to the pond um, staff has been in contact with uh, land and water resources we have suggested that six conditions be placed on the conditional use permit in order to keep 50 animals on the lot We've been having conversations with Mr. Joe uh, Spahn and he has uh, requested that this petition be withdrawn and then he does not want this to be withdrawn. He has not put his, with, uh, his petition to withdraw in writing. He is requesting that um, he is allowed to uh, be allowed to remove the uh, animals by the second week in January County staff since we have been uh, working on this since June we have given them a deadline date of December 22nd to remove all animals we have contacted the town of Springfield as well as land and water resources to see if this uh, the removal of animals would be adequate over the next 10 days and they felt that uh, a person could adequately remove 50 animals from the property to come into compliance. And that's about it so far. So is the staff recommending postponement till December or? Well, I don't see Mr. Spawn here. I would. Given the fact that uh, Mr. Spawn does not want to comply with any of the manure management, I would suggest that this petition be denied. I'll make a motion to deny that based on the staff recommendation. Second. Okay, we have a motion uh, to deny the CUP 2360 and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, the CUP is denied. Next, we, we did the waiver. I moved for a three minute recess. I think that was a second, so uh, <laughs> approved.